How's everyone doing? It's Isaac Wade, Doctor of Pharmacy, and Oral Minoxidil, also known as Lonitin, has gained a lot of popularity in the hair loss community, as it's cheap, available by prescription, and has shown good efficacy in recent studies. However, oral minoxidil was never meant for treating hair loss, and more concerningly, the drug has a black box warning highlighting the risk of pericardial effusion, which is a buildup of fluid around the heart, which sometimes lead to cardiac tamponade, obstructive shock, and cardiac arrest. Although these side effects were observed when minoxidil was used at high doses in very sick individuals for treating blood pressure. For hair loss, minoxidil is typically prescribed at lower doses in healthy individuals, and it's entirely possible that in this use case, minoxidil would have a more reasonable safety profile. So is oral minoxidil effective for treating hair loss, and is it worth the risk? Let's get right into it. Minoxidil was originally approved in 1979 by the FDA as a treatment for high blood pressure. But interestingly, in studies, minoxidil was observed to cause excessive hair growth, also known as hypertrichosis, as a side effect. So much so that in the mid-1980s, doctors had already began prescribing oral minoxidil off-label to their balding patients. Later, minoxidil was reformulated into a safer topical version for treating hair loss, which was approved in 1991 under the brand name Rogaine. The original name Regain was rejected, since the drug was only effective in 39% of men, and Regain was thought to be too misleading. Nowadays, topical minoxidil is available in cheaper generic alternatives and over-the-counter, whereas oral minoxidil still remains a prescription drug. The mechanism of action by which minoxidil works in hair loss is not clear. However, we do know that minoxidil is a prodrug, which means that minoxidil itself is not active, but is instead converted to its active form, minoxidil sulfate, by the sulfonotransferase enzyme. For topical minoxidil, this enzyme is active on the outer root sheath of the hair follicle. However, people have differing amounts of sulfonotransferase in this area, which may explain why some people do not respond to topical minoxidil. On the other hand, oral minoxidil is believed to get around this issue by being converted to minoxidil sulfate through liver and platelet sulfonylase transferase enzymes, which topical minoxidil cannot access. The reason why we don't just use minoxidil sulfate is because minoxidil sulfate, the active form, is just not that stable, so it would be very difficult to create a formulation with this molecule that would last more than a couple days. When it comes to indications, oral minoxidil is officially indicated for treating high blood pressure that is resistant to other forms of treatment. However, in this video, we're talking about using oral minoxidil for treating hair loss. For full disclosure, this is an off-label indication, which means that oral minoxidil was never approved for treating hair loss, and the evidence for using it for this purpose is generally not as strong. That being said, there is some evidence which we'll get right into. And I think that dermatologist Dr. Heyman wrote a really good article summarizing the evidence, which I'm going to steal from. First of all, let's talk about safety. Jimenez and colleagues assessed 14 studies with 442 patients taking oral minoxidil from 0.2 to 5 mg per day. They observed hypertrichosis in 24% of patients, pedal edema in 2% of patients, postural hypotension in 1.1% of patients, and changes to heart rate in 1.3% of patients. On a side note, hypertrichosis or excessive hair growth usually appears in the first three months of therapy and affects the sideburns and temples. It's usually pretty mild and can be managed by just shaving the area. Now let's talk about efficacy. Sharma and colleagues looked at 10 studies of more than 19,000 patients taking between 0.25 and 5 mg per day of oral minoxidil. They found that 61 to 100% of patients with male pattern hair loss and 18 to 82% of patients with alopecia areata had significant clinical improvements in their hair loss. The most common side effects that were observed were hypertrichosis and postural hypotension. Randolph and Tosti evaluated 16 studies in 622 patients taking low-dose oral minoxidil for mostly male pattern hair loss. And they found that low-dose oral minoxidil was a safe and effective treatment for hair loss in healthy patients who had trouble with topical minoxidil. These patients also did not report any serious cardiopulmonary side effects, although the authors did still recommend careful monitoring of patients. Lastly, one of my favorite studies, a network meta-analysis of 23 randomized control trials by Gupta and colleagues, ranked all of the hair loss treatments in terms of efficacy and found that oral minoxidil at the 5 mg dose was probably more effective than both finasteride 1 mg and topical minoxidil 5 mg for treating male pattern hair loss. Now that we've talked about some of the evidence, let's talk about the pros and cons of taking oral minoxidil. 
The pros include that it's cheap, it's pharma grade, which means it's got high quality control, it seems to be safe and effective at low doses in healthy individuals, it's easy to adhere to as it's a pill that you take once per day, it's more cosmetically pleasing than topical minoxidil as it doesn't make your hair greasy and cause dandruff, and it's a great add-on treatment to drugs that work through different mechanisms of action like finasteride and dutasteride. Now the cons of oral minoxidil is that it's hard to find a doctor willing to prescribe it as it's got that black box warning and it's not officially indicated for treating hair loss. There's also low quality evidence for the most part to support the safety and efficacy of this drug. Large double blind randomized control trials with oral minoxidil just have not been done, at least not to the same extent as the ones done for oral finasteride and topical minoxidil. Anyways, that's all I have to talk about when it comes to oral minoxidil. I hope you found this video interesting, I hope you found something new, and I hope you know what types of questions to ask and whether or not you would be interested in asking your doctor about trying this treatment. Anyways, that's all I have to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.